Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this show on the road, huh? Welcome in to Season 18. We are in the first week of Season 18 of Nexus Gaming Series. <clears throat> My name is Eternally Blue. Looking forward to being your caster tonight. Featuring Raging Roosters WBP. I'm not sure what that means. Anyway, they're facing Habitual Line Steppers. We are in Div E. No East or West. It's all one division here. As you can see, the map bands tonight. Rooster Pizza. Or not Raging Roosters. I said Raging Roosters. That was their old team. This is Rooster Pizza. They have banned D Shire and Cursed Hollow. Habitual Line Steppers banning Towers of Doom and Infernal Shrines. Alright, Lobby is up. We're going to Tomb of the Spider Queen. This was chosen by Pato, so Team Blue here. The Rooster Pizza Gang. Alright, we should... Be about ready here. Is there not any music here? I wonder if I turn music off. I have. There we go. Need some sort of ambiance, or otherwise it gets pretty quiet and you just hear me coughing and breathing loud. We got the all clear from both teams. Looks like we're about to get to the show on the road. So, habitual line steppers. I don't believe they are a new team. At least the the names are very familiar to me. Even though the team name specifically is not. <clears throat> Rooster Pizza is a conglomeration of Raging Roosters and Community Pizza. So they have combined forces this season. And I feel like it's no uh, best kept secret at this point. If you've been in Div D, Div E over the last couple seasons, you'll know Pato. You'll know the two heroes that he plays a lot of, and that's why you see the Vala ban. Likely to see a Zuljan ban as well. Easily his two strongest heroes with the highest win rate. Junkrat. Pretty interesting to see Junkrat banned um, in Div E. I don't feel like he's played as much down in the lower divs, whereas nearly in A and Nexus you see him banned pretty consistently. Also saddle bro, I see you there. Howdy howdy. Thanks for stopping and supporting these teams tonight. No Anduin. I'm sorry, the Brewers win 10-0 to tonight? That is... 10-0. to What a butt-kicking. And the final ban for the Roosters gonna be another healer, Stukov. So Johanna's still up. 
Brightwing's still up, Blaze's still up, Hogger's still up. A lot of very good meta choices. And HLS says we don't care about any of them. Now, if I were to ruin a Garrosh life's here, I would probably just lock Brightwing at Johanna. But that's why I love Divi. We have <laughs> May and Orphea, which is a bold choice. Orphea can be... Yeah, Orphea, I feel like, is going to have a really rough time, especially now into the Brightwing. Especially into Tassadar. Orphea is one of those heroes where you're basically telling the other team, F you, I'm better. Because it's not a great... Not a great hero, unless you have a lot of front line to protect her. She kind of just gets exploded if uh, she gets taunted in any sort of way. Um, Garrosh is... Garrosh is very scary to play into. Also doesn't have a ton of wave clear, which is basically her major downfall. Kind of poor on camps. Not kind of poor, she's terrible on camps. She can kind of clear a wave, but then she has no more abilities. Hogger banned, Sonya banned, so both offlaners banned. Surprised not to see another healer banned. Rhaegar, definitely a good choice here for Rooster Pizza. I expect to see a Leo as well. We have Falstad and Offlane Varian. So a little smashy smash. Final picks, Blaze and Greymane. Very solid offlane, very solid DPS. Um, I think Greymane, Greymane, Blaze, Brightwing, Tassadar are really strong blow up. But a lot of disengage from the side of the Roosters. They have D Shield with Uther, they have a Gust, they have Snowball. Pretty interesting draft from the the Rooster Pizza gang. Just a lot of comfort picks. Anyway, we'll see how it all plays out as game one, this best of three series, begins right meow. Hopefully the graphics are still in the right place from last season. I didn't change much. So hopefully... Nothing changed. <clears throat> From left to right, your home team tonight is going to be Rooster Pizza WBP. We have Pado on Orphea, Toast Monster on May, Night Knight on Uther, Shane on the Varian, and Dr. J on the Falstead. And from right to left in the red trunks, we have Habitual Line Steppers. We have Extrex. Extrex? Extrex. Ah, I get it. On the Brightwing. Peldor playing the Garrosh. Boomer APM. Um, <laughs> it's a great name. On uh, the tasks that are no more heroes on Greymane and in the bottom lane. Prostman Pat, our resident uh, Meta Madness coordinator. Very much thank you to him for setting all that up. Um, it was a it was a pretty good time. I didn't have as much fun as I hoped, but that's not his fault. It was very uh, well organized, honestly, for being the first year. So appreciate the time that all went into that. Anyway, enough of him. We go to the mid lane where the action is. No more heroes. Looking to keep that W up. Get that infinite stack. Peldor looking for something in the bottom lane. Is he going to find a throw? Not quite. I mean, now he is. Okay, so there's Varian. Good peel there, though, from Toast Monster. Good cleanse from Extra X, but no more heroes gets caught out. Greymane's going to go down. Peldor getting really low as well. Dr. J not quite able to finish that kill.
Meanwhile, Boomer APM kind of caught on an island here. Good rotations in. Orphea able to get that kill. And it's 2-1, to one, or excuse me, 2-0 to nil already in favor of Rooster Pizza. We take a look at our level 1 talents. Nothing super out of the ordinary. W build there um, from the Tassadar. And again, caught out maybe is Normal Heroes. And Orphea just getting so much value. Down goes Greyman yet again. Peldor fresh off his hearth. Is going to fall as well. And so far, it's four kills to nil. And I feel like this is just kind of early game jitters for the side of HLS. They just need to kind of get this out of the system. They're rotating really well. This is obviously a team that has played for a number of seasons now together. You have Q build from the Falstead, which I like to see here for the wave clear. W build, and it is High King's Quest in the bottom lane. Here we have a flight from... Oh, um, they might be on bottom camp. <laughs> As Blaze sees not a bird, not a plane, but a Falstad flying over the top. Grammy and an extra X are going to be on this back camp, getting the bruisers out for HLS while Tassadar clears that top lane. Wisely playing a little bit safer this time around. And HLS doing a good job getting back uh, caught up back in Soak. And getting their camp out in a timely manner. Falstad... Gonna have to back here after this. Eh, maybe not. Maybe he has tap. Shane with his patented Varian now taking Smash. There we have Colossus Smash. Peldor and Gang are stepping up here in this mid lane. Oh, Falstad is in Narnia, but ends up getting the skirt away. Peldor just a little bit late to the party there. That could have been a dead chicken. Turn-in is right around the corner for the side of Rooster Pizza. Dr. J, again, checking a bush with a Garrosh. Is there anybody there to follow up? Not quite. There's a Polly. He's not. He still has his E, I think. Oh, no, he does not. So I believe he actually interrupted the E there. Bing bong, says Night Night. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Prostman, Pat, and Varian duking it out here. Kind of an interesting matchup. I mean, Blaze should definitely win the wave clear, but... Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Blaze looking to turn in on this bottom side of the map. Turns in his 16. Rooster Pizza does have their turn in now. Looks like they'll be getting their back camp out here. As you see, Dr. J and Night Knight tag team in that camp. He's going to back for some mana. Brightwing almost... Uh, oh, that's not... I was looking at the wrong team. Big engage in the bottom lane. Unstoppable. Is it going to be enough to save Peldor? Good spell armor there from Extra X to get Peldor out. Toast Monster trying to turn in. Peldor not quite lighting him, but it may have paid for it with his life. No Unstoppable at this point. Peldor is going to go down. So he did stall the objective turn in, but ultimately uh, it's going to happen. Wall goes down here in the mid lane for HLS. <laughs> That's a really interesting little combo there. I, I quite like that. Toast puts a uh, May circle around the target, and then the Uther goes and bonks him in it to guarantee the stun. The folly of May is not necessarily that she's got a very terrible tank. It's the fact that her engage is inconsistent and very difficult as opposed to a point-and-click like a Diablo. Um, but if you have some sort of setup to help the May, it makes all the difference. So here we have five man engage here from the side of Rooster Pizza. Peldor at half health, getting chunked there from that Orphea. Toast goes flying in. Good shift coming in though from Extra X. Toast Monster in danger here in the top lane. Pato looking to support him. Toast, good unstoppable there. Middle fort almost going down, but not quite. Blaze did a great job in the bottom lane. Barely a tower even scratched after that full objective. Top lane only losing a wall. Two towers still intact. So a really strong defense there um, from HLS. They have a lot of wave clear with the, the gray main, the Tassadar. And you almost like to see them with a full wave here just to go hit the buildings. But Rooster Pizza going to be very comfortable just getting this camp. Trying to get their 10s. Prostman Pat not going to be threatened in any way.
take a quick look at our level 10s as they about to come in here. Obviously we saw that unstoppable. Toast looking for some sort of engage here, trying to force something. Now the level 10s are online, we do see Gust, it is Snowball, Divine Storm, so not D-Shield, but we do have more stuns with the Eternal Feast, I could see that being a combo. Good wave clear here in the top lane, meanwhile Blaze and Varian are in the bottom lane. Now Varian is going to struggle with this quite a bit, um, Extra X coming down to provide a little bit of extra pressure, <laughs> extra pressure, get it because his name's extra, anyway, um, looks like Toast is trying to look for a Snowball here. Not quite finding one. Dr. J gonna go clear. And very similarly to Rooster Pizza's first turn, this is not gonna get a lot of value. In fact, it does get more value than Rooster Pizza got on their first objective. So while down five kills, um, HLS is not, I mean, they're one team fight away from being up in XP. Honestly, they've done a really good job just kinda maintaining the course, got the jitters out, got their tens. And now, as we take a look at them, we do see an Emerald Wind, um, which is kind of interesting. They have decided to do boss. They have Gust, they have Snowball, they have really good point control. They have Emerald, or no, they don't have an Emerald Wind, excuse me. Uh, we see Garrosh with the Taunt, Bunker, Black Hole. I mean, this is a crazy... This is crazy, actually. <laughs> you don't see this. Ten minutes, everybody's up, no turn-ins, like... This decided to rip boss, and HLS has no idea what's happening. Varian's gonna die, but like, okay. Boss is gonna be pushing that top lane. HLS almost has a turn in as well. Blaze gets so much value bottom. I mean, the boss is, isn't worth that, right? Surely? Is it even gonna hit the tower? A boss this early? Let's see. I'm, I'm curious. We're gonna. Nothing else on the map matters. They're clearing mid, oh well. I gotta see for science. A level 10 boss. Okay, so it's going to get half. We'll call this half. And almost half. Yeah, I don't know. It's just a really... It's kind of like a, it does nothing type of call. Granted, a Varian doesn't die. Maybe it makes more of a difference. Toast has to be careful here. They could absolutely kill him if they decide. Throw into Bullet, into Polly. Yeah, now they decide. There's the Bullet. There's an Unstoppable coming up. A Boomer APM is ripping him a new one. Black Hole is a little bit late. Toast is going to be able to skirt away. That is a lot of ultimates down. That is three ultimates down for what is now a full health May. Both teams with turn in. Night Knight not able to get it in time. No more heroes going to be able to turn in here in the top lane. It's going to be an objective phase for HLS. Timely one is that too as they are down 13s just for a little bit. Mid camp here, gonna be cleared up very quickly. I'd like to see the Blaze come up and get involved here with his objective. Toast looking for a snowball, but not finding one. Well done there by Peldor to kind of just throw him away. Here comes Postman looking for some sort of fight, but they're under spell shield right now. And even though the objectives are pushing, you don't necessarily want to fight under this. Falstad's gonna skirt away. Both teams very passive after that first little scrimmage of five kills. Yeah, Varian doing what you would expect a Varian to do. Uh, just kind of losing the buildings because uh, Blaze is such a bullshit hero. The fact that that stun hits even though he hit the wall first. I mean, come on. Does boss scales on levels? Or yeah, boss scales on levels. Uh, or is it time? Oh, Peldor. Dr. J checking the bush here. Peldor looking for the bird. Is going to find him. Follow-up just a little bit late. Brightwing and Blaze are on the bottom camp instead. Peldor, is he going to be able to get that shift down in time? Well done there by Extra X. <laughs> Peldor having to take the level 10 for his Brightwing, saying, if you're not going to blink, I'm going to throw you, and that could be your blink. If we don't see a uh, friendly throw on the Brightwing into the back line of the Roosters and an Emerald Wind... Engage. I'm going to be rather disappointed. Because why on God's green earth would you take Emerald Wind anyway? <laughs> it has to scale on... I mean, time and levels are kind of the same, right? Here we have a big engage from Toast. Snowball actually getting pollied as No More Heroes puts a bolt into the back of May. But she's thick enough and can take it. 
Meanwhile, Rooster Pizza did get a turn in here. They're looking to push mid. Top is likely going to fall at this point. It's probably late in the game where that does take a fort, although it's got a long way to walk. Maybe not. It's only a three-quarters health. And unfortunately for the side of uh, Rooster Pizza, they don't engage, ver or they don't siege very well. A little bit of lag here. Good taunt onto the Garrosh. My frame rate has gone to absolute shit right now. Okay, I think I'm back. Weird. So yeah. Um, Eternally Blue has rejoined the game. The gust to try to save Night Knight. Extra X actually does go down to that D-Storm. That was pretty crazy. Uther doesn't die there if he's D shield. Ahem, hem. Camp up in 30 for the roosters. So then, who's leveling? What scales off of? I don't know. Google that. <laughs> Google that for me. Now I'm curious. I'm pretty sure it's time. I'm pretty sure it's time. Peldor, 24 gems, trying to turn in. HLS does have a turn in here. They get their camps out. They have 16s. <clears throat> They've started to claw back in the kill territory. 80% sure it's time? Yeah, I'm... I would say that's about as confident as I am with it, too. <laughs> Stun for Postman just missing. Peldor trying to run him down as well. But not finding any luck there. Mid lane pushing in hard. Toast Monster hasn't yet got a good snowball. And I got a feeling that at some point we're going to see a snowball here that's going to change the trajectory of this game. And you can see him looking for it right now. Wisely. HLS backing up. All their lanes are a little bit screwed. <laughs> Can't get the answers yet. Peldor trying to guard the turn in just a little bit, but I think more so he's just trying to find out where everybody from the Rooster Pizzas are. Camp has to be cleared mid, but it almost looks like they want to try to fight here. Pado is scouting this. Oh my gosh. Oh, Peldor just couldn't quite get to him in time. Meanwhile, Dr. J has been the Dr. Camp man. He has been down here... He has been camping like a, a Call of Duty enthusiast. And that camp in the mid lane did get a relatively decent amount of value. Blaze gets his turn in. HLS gonna be pushing this next objective. At some point, these teams are gonna have to fight. The win condition, obviously, is the Gust. Gust is win condition here on this map. Let's take a look at the talents because we haven't in a while. If anything stands out out of the ordinary, nothing really. Falstead actually doesn't have a lot of stacks, but just because they haven't been fighting a whole lot, honestly. High King's Quest is yet, not yet completed. It is Speed Banner. Most other things pretty normal, I'd say. Falstad attempts to fly, but then decides nah. Is this going to be the first fort in favor of HLS? Uh, no. Not even close. They have such good siege. I would really like them to try to be a little bit more aggressive towards some of these buildings here. Have the garage anchor hit the building. Are they going to try to rip boss? No, that's crazy. No way. Uh, okay. Okay. Both teams in this game have decided to take a boss just, like, raw. With no advantage, everybody's still alive. And here comes Toast. He gets thrown away. He's trying to get in there. Is he going to get there in their time? No. And now it's a disaster for Rooster Pizza. It's a good gust, but ultimately, you don't really necessarily want that. Somehow the Tassadar is the first to fall. 
Grayman, oh, the, there's a snowball and a half. <laughs> the Brightwing is able to push him away momentarily. But it is an absolute bloodbath on boss. Uh, HLS able to capture the boss, and that is a very small consolation prize for the fact that they're going to have a full objective pushing all of their keeps right now. And uh, level 20 is now obtained for Rooster Pizza. Uncaptured mercenaries also increase their success every minute. When you're... Yeah, it's time. Okay. I think that's just game. I think uh, they can just hit the core here. Nine seconds before Tassadar's even up. Um, Falstad on core is pretty good. That's really their only super good wave. I guess Varian's there too. But yeah, that's going to do her. Game one going over to the Rooster Pizza WBP. How do I zoom in? There we go. Night, night. That was <laughs> such a crazy end of the game. It was very, very passive, very calculated. Okay, you get your turn in, then I'll get my turn in, and then we'll walk around, and then let's randomly do a boss. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> like 30 seconds later, the game's over. Uh. All right. The only main damage is Pato. Into a Brightwing, into a Garrosh, into a Greymane. Absolutely no fear. Greymane of no more heroes. I mean, the, like, the damage overall is just so so incredibly low. There's just no team fighting. Leading the way in Siege is Boomer APM on the Tassadar. And Blaze as well. Glory to the Alliance. This is actually a really good... I feel like this is a comp they run a lot. Because with the Uther, with the lack of healing that they have... Like, obviously, May has a lot of self-healing variants. Self-healing, Faust that's self-healing. Or if it's self-healing, can really get a lot of value out of the the Uther there. And then you give 50 armor. Um, it's pretty pretty solid. The Emerald Wind is my only sus talent, uh, talent of the night. I also think I would have liked the additional um, spell power, especially in like an Orphea. Because Orphea just cooks, especially when you have minus 15 spell power from the Falstad at all times. Alright, so... We will go back to map pick. We will give Rooster Pizza their hard-earned point on the board. And we will go to a game two. The HLS needing to win this one to stay alive. Let's see. Today is Tuesday. The third? No. Sixth. Where am I looking? Here we go. Do we have a lobby yet? Not quite. Oh, yes we do. They just didn't invite me. Oh, crap. We're going all Tarak. Oh, nobody wants to be here. Nobody wants to see this. 
All right, for all you Alterac enjoyers in the chat, this one's for you, I guess. Let's see. I'm not sure who picked the map yet. Coin toss goes... No, wait. First draft team. Yeah, it should not be a coin toss. Surely they're fixing that now. No match history. Good. And team one. So this was picked by... Habitual line steppers. I saw the comp that uh, Rooster Pizza just ran. Pretty strong on, on this map as well. If they have the Falstead, they have the May, like really good point control. Uther, all that jazz. Curious to see how much of the same it'll be here. Alright, Alterac Pass. The map that could end in 15 minutes or 30. Very little in between. <clears throat> so personally, nah, that's way too low. Uh, that's better. All right. Personally, I think a Nubarak is first pickable here. Same with Rhaegar. You need something that can take the camps out extremely quick. Um, also, the Nubarak just being able to kind of cheese things instantly is really nice too. Can be done with Gaslo, but it's a little less. Um, well, I mean, then you have a Gaslo on your team. Vala continuing to be banned from HLS. Probably a good choice. Garden. What? I don't remember what I was saying. We see Johanna Band. At least this map is good. This map is not good. This is not a desirable map. Oh, you mean for how long it's going to take? Yeah. No, I mean, like, if somebody picks Ragnaros here, which is a very strong possibility... I see Shane taking Stuke off here, likely playing a Taunt Varian. There's Brightwing. And a Nubarak. There you go. Love the Nubarak pick here. Brightwing, also solid. So this could just be a Varian. All shall suffer... It is Leo, and Pato says, I'm going to run it back with the Orphea. How much spell shield you have? Two heroes of spell shield? Don't care. Orphea. You just love the confidence. Yeah, 15 or 30 minute games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will not take it back. You know, I would say Pato is the, the easy K of Div E. It's like, I don't care how many counters you have. I'm going to just play what I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna beat you with it anyway. And most of the time it probably works. <clears throat> I 
All right. So, Varian banned. Clearly worried about the Taunt Varian with uh, Stukov, which is fair. Sonya taken out. So let's see what habitual line steppers are going to go with here. I really like Falstead here. Um, Chromie can be really solid here, stalling the objective. Not a huge fan of Dahaka. It's not one of his better maps. Um, but still can still can come in and wreck some chaos in the back line, especially when there's a Stukov there. Just kind of sticking his hand in the ground, not moving. Rounding out the roster for the Roosters. Dr. J playing Greymane. And Toast Monster on ETC. Nah, it's not shots fired. It's a respect thing. I would never play Orphea into this. The <laughs> same way I would never play Zeratul into some of the things he does. And yet, sometimes we just win games. So, like, I get it. Sylvanas is a very strong finishing uh, hero here. A lot of dive from the side of HLS. A lot of dive from both teams, actually. Siege advantage definitely goes in favor of HLS. They can siege pretty hard. Really, the the Rooster Pizza Gang only have the Greymane. It's going to be still on camp, Greymane on camp. Playing to hawk on this map feels bad. Don't disagree. Don't disagree with that at all. You can't mount through the slow zones. Correct. Alright, so our home team tonight. <clears throat> Up 1-0 over the HLS habitual line steppers is Rooster Pizza WBP. Shane, 9110 on Stukov. Toast Monster on ETC with his golden cock. Pato playing Orphea. Dr. J on Grey Main and bringing up the rear is Night Knight on Leo. And right to left, we have habitual line steppers. Peldor and Extra playing a new Brightwing, respectively, going into the bottom lane here. Alongside them, APM Boomer, or Boomer APM rather, on the Chromie. No more heroes playing with Sylvanas, and in the mid lane is Postman Pat on the Dahaka. See a pretty sizable squad going to cheese this bottom lane, and rightfully so. I mean, they're going to be able to take this fort no problem, or take the tower rather, no problem. Sylvanas doing what they should be. If they take tower here, it's really good. Surely they do. Surely the Beatles get the tower. Oh my god, the Beatles don't get the tower. Oh no. <laughs> that would tilt me so hard. <laughs> it bothers me just watching. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Prostman Pat doing a good job clearing out that mid lane. And now you see Shane being a nuisance, sticking his arm in the ground, doing the ARAM thing. Well done here by Peldor, cutting off rotations, stalling them here in the mid lane. Brightwing and Sill already waiting for camp. This is clearly a map that they've played before. They have a really good draft for it. They're already on camp, whereas Rooster Pizza, very far behind. Um, they already sieged and almost got a bottom tower. If I'm Boomer APM, if you don't hit this tower, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Boomer, Boomer, please. It doesn't take a lot of APM to hit the tower. Boomer, okay. We're, nothing else matters. We're staying on you till you hit this tower. Boomer, Boomer, surely. Surely you go and hit that tower. Secret mission. Here we go. Boomer. Hey. Hey, you. You see this? You see this top? Hey. Surely. Surely now. Now, Boomer. Be my hero. Oh my god, he's running away. Alright, in the mid lane, the camp is pushing out for the side of HLS. <clears throat> Leo coming here to support and help clear, but Night Knight really taking a lot of damage here. Does get the W off. Dr. J going in there. Getting swipe, swipe. 
It is Overwhelming Affliction. Good dive here from Peldor. No follow-up yet, though. Button's just off cooldown. Or on cooldown, rather. Peldor getting pretty low as well. It is Globes. It's Prog Rock from the ETC. Tissue regeneration. So no even advanced agility on this map. And <laughs> that tower. Okay, I, I feel like we should do a poll to see if this tower actually stays here the entire game. <laughs> oh my gosh. Full W build there from Chromie. Camp is up again this time. Rooster Pete's are on top of it. So they're going to be ahead now. With the camp's pushing. Estelle and Brightwing are lagging a little bit behind. It's not Mercenary Queen either. It's uh, Unstable Poison. So Can't wait for him to have 3k healing over the course of the game. Wait, who? Oh, <laughs> the Dahaka. Yeah, Tissue Regen. The Peldor, Peldor is now in the bottom lane. Okay, he's 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 got my stream on in the background, and he heard me ridiculing his his teammate. And he's like, I can't have this. Surely, I'm gonna have to be the one to be the hero. I'm gonna be the one to dive this building to get it right. No, he's going mid. <clears throat> really nice push here from Rooster Pizza, but a massive engagement from Peldor and Stukov, getting a little too close to the <laughs> the front line here. And ends up going down to first kill in favor of HLS. Oh, ETC on the prog rock, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now Toast Monster here is kind of a Narnia, but he's able to get a boop away. Comes, oh man, he looks back. He never looked back. No more heroes going to be able to cap this. And HLS just seems to have a better... They seem to be rotating a little bit better. I don't know how true that is or not, but here's a slide. Stukov not able to get it off in time, so he's able to get that unstoppable. But Peldor is definitely going down there. There's a loop from Boomer APM. Not a lot of follow-up, though. Oh my gosh, sorry, I'm trying to zoom out. Postman Pratt getting kind of messed up here in the mid lane. It's a really good cleanse, and unfortunately all that essence doesn't pop immediately. So, Dahaka going down 2-1 to one now in favor of Rooster Pizza. They're going to be able to get some time on this objective. Both camps are up for each team. Oh, the trap was there the whole time and they didn't actually hit it. There's really nothing here to force Rooster Pizza off. They can kind of just int for this if they decide to. Toast taken... The brunt of the damage, but armor is good. There's a slide on to the Anubarak, and now the Silence Puddle really putting in a lot of work. Anubarak going down yet again. So my son totally clicked me into the casting couch. Oh, I didn't even hear you. <laughs> I have all my um, my notifications just uh, turned off. That's really funny. <laughs> no problem there. <laughs> Good slide here, and it's a beautiful mosh. Here we have Orphea with the feast. Down goes, <laughs> I hope the spray wasn't intentional with the default spray. <laughs> but Orphea with the double kill there. Uh, we have a Wizen Duelist Greymane. Uh, go for the throat, massive shove. We see the Entomb, Mosh Pit, and Eternal Feast. Really nice play there from Toast. Shane uh, making sure his alt works, and it does. What the hell was that? Level 10s here are online. There is a mind control. ETC catching it in the face, but um, nothing really coming of it. It is ISO, Cocoon, Emerald Wind yet again. Mind control and Temporal Loop.
with both teams so cavalier about taking bosses, I'm interested to see um, when they decide to do such a thing. And with three of them shading bottom, it almost seems like this is an inevitability. Peldor is here checking this boss. Dr. J swiping onto that camp. Meanwhile, on the opposite side, no more heroes and extra X. Taking the siege camp, minute and a half, that will be up. Wait, is Nova actually secret tech on this map? Because if you bribe the whole thing, it comes back twice as fast. Huh? Nova's a good hero. There is a slide on the extra X. There is uh, an Emerald Wind. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> to go up just a little bit too late to get that uh, silence puddle down. Level 13s are online for the side of Rooster Pizza here. Is that tower dead? Oh my god, thank you. Okay, the tower, the tower's dead. I don't know when it died, but it died. And as far as I'm concerned, HLS finally won the game. You see uh, Rooster Pizza heading towards this bottom lane. Greymane down here. They should be able to cap this relatively easily now. Greymane do be doing a lot of damage. They're starting to come on down, but it's going to be just a little too late. Oh. <laughs> it's Dr. J. Gets hit in the face. It's a full four-man back, so this is going to be a free clear. Peldor probably saw that they were backing. I'm going to top. Postman Pat here smells blood in the water, wisely deciding to back up. Night Knight trying to get this objective started. I like this play from him for sure. If you don't uh, get the objective, at least you're killing the minions and allow it to be kind of a free objective for you. Pat's taking a lot of damage here though, but he is going to fully commit to this. Gets the ISO. Auto attack cooldown is good. Here comes the Brightwing to try to get a Polymorph. Is going to be able to do it. Peldor with the follow up. Night Knight. Oh, no way he gets away. Right? There's the spell shield. There's the tongue. Oh my gosh, he gets away. He gets away and the boss is capped for pizza. <laughs> One tower in bot. <laughs> uh, game's basically unwatchable now. Toast does have... Uh, does have mosh... I'd like to see them go for an engage here. Just cocoon toast and go. There's a loop. Oh no, that's a cocoon on the loop target. Oh no, that's unfortunate synergy. And the fact that it's not synergies, synergistic at all. I really wish HLS would have taken that fight. Get the cocoon out. Here comes the dig. You're actually by one of the two bushes on the map. Get the dig in here. Oh, there's a mosh again. But it's really nice by No More Heroes to get the uh, the mind control out. But it's too little too late, unfortunately. Brightwing goes down immediately. Not able to blink out. And then uh, Nubarak falls next. So It's a pretty uphill battle. Oh, Toast is looking for more. Oh, nope, they just decided to do this camp. It's really nothing to stop him, right? Postman could try to get a tongue here. Doesn't get a tongue onto ETC. But Shane doing a really good job getting that silence puddle out. Probably saved him, honestly. I guess they didn't have mind control for a little bit yet, but full objective going in favor of Rooster Pizza. Middle clamp. Clamp? Give him the clamps. Oh, Postman just a little out of range for that silence puddle. Toast trying to go in and do something special, but oh, he ends up doing it. The loop, though, could be bad. No cleanse, obviously, with that Stukov. Peldor really taking a lot of damage. He's trying to do something. No More Heroes does get that last auto onto the Greymane, so it's... At least that's about all the damage they should be able to do. They have Mind Control here shortly. And she's standing still. It does end up hitting Toast. I'm sure that was accidental, but... I like that look there from No More Heroes. 
There is a slot. I mean, that is crazy that he gets to do that. Boomer APM doing a lot of damage with that W from Chromie. Burning Beetles. Remorselessness. Auto, auto attack build there from uh, Leo, which means this is probably not a Silence and Tomb. So, prepare your butts for that. Raymane down to only five Wizen stacks. Alright. So now it's time for HLS to make a play. They have to. And they have the ability to do it. I mean, they can cocoon, dig, and go. And they really don't have a ton of disengage. Maybe even fight over this mid, mid lane here. There is a bush that you could technically dig to. Is this a mosh? Peldor able to get out just in time. Really well done there. And Tomb is down, and they're still looking for more. The Haka is trying to dig or go down as fast as he can. Dr. J keeps spraying, which is interesting. Time for top boss. I think I want to see HLS fight for this. Camp, middle camp's gonna clear itself, but like you can't, you can't give this. Uh, or at least kill this. I don't know. This probably takes the keep. I guess you don't have your tank. You don't have your engage. You don't have cocoon. It's really tough. Leo does get some time on the objective as well. I'm assuming they're all roading to top boss. Yep, they are. And that'll be 20s, and then... Uh... I mean, Night Night can't be there. That's super illegal. Yeah. Okay. Uh... I mean, I keep is super dead, and this boss becomes a lot more dangerous then. Pat's gonna go back to clear it, but I think he's decided that, yeah, it's a lost cause. But he still have to clear it, I think? Right? Because can this end? Probably not. It's probably too early for it to end. I'm curious to see how much damage this does. I mean, that's not nothing. <laughs> that is sizable damage to their core. With a boss pushing. So, like, what is... What does HLS do? Okay, well, that, that distracted them temporarily. I mean, that was almost half the core. Yeah. I think if I'm Roosters, I just run at the core. They have a boss pushing in top. There's nothing to stop them. You have to clear the boss and lose their core. Or not clear the boss and then maybe lose the core later. But they're just going to go for the safe play. They're going to take the objective. Boss is officially cleared. Officially cleared. And it just looks like Rooster Pizza has them kind of in checkmate right now. Wait, is it Silence and Tomb? It is Silence and Tomb. Alright, good. Death Metal as well. Mind Control missing. No More Heroes is in a little bit of trouble here. For the Alliance. Quest complete. I mean, that guy is just kind of out there. But uh, Toast probably looking for a mosh. There it is. They've decided they're just going to kill the Anubarak. Good mind control there. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough damage to follow it up. Extra X with uh, a disengage, level 20. To see, you just spam that. Intensive wins. Every five seconds he's going to have that. But I think it's just too little too late. It's a good Entomb. On to Postman. Good cleanse there from the right wing. But uh, with this objective pushing in, all they have to do is really hit core. Toast looking for the Death Mosh. They just don't have enough damage to even kill him. Paddle getting really low. 
Gonna be able to die. There's a small window of hope. And that window has been closed. As Rooster Pizza WBP wins game two. And takes a series. I want Silence and Tomb removed from the game. <laughs> I want to take the other alts and not be trolling. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Let's see here. Let's give Rooster Pizza the hard earned point. Click, update, bam. Leading the way in damage was not the guy spraying the whole game, but in fact, his other teammate, Orphea and Leo, followed by Chromie in the top there, who didn't actually die the entire game. Siege led by Leo, Dahaka close behind with that global. Piercing Sands, I like that. Yeah. <clears throat> HLS just lost a little bit too much too uh, too early. To come back, they looked really strong early. They looked like they had a plan. I think the fault was when the tower didn't die, but what do I know? <laughs> uh, anywho's. We're going to flip it over to this, and do this. Wait, where's the thing? Winner, blue team. And uh, that's going to do it. Uh, that's going to do it to me. I'm going to... Uh, whoops. Let's see who else is streaming tonight. We could throw everybody over to one of the other... Casters, I think Snarf is streaming. Ektar is streaming as well. Uh, um, I'll throw it over to... Wait, are they actually done? Do-do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Oh yeah, alright, game three between uh, Papagas on Ice and Heavy Group Therapy is being uh, cast by Ektar, and I believe Seventh Ace as well, so we'll throw everybody to them. Anywho's, thanks for uh, hanging out, Kenny and uh, Rexpa. If you're around, I'll see you in like two minutes. Otherwise, congratulations again, Rooster Pizza WBP 2-0 domination over HLS, the habitual line stippers. Thanks for tuning in, take care. Don't get me wrong, if you play the Valera well, it will be effective. But holy god, talk about something harder to execute than play against. Valera, I think, is the poster child I, I feel like of that the, draft philosophy. I feel like the first two games took place on Tuesday, and then we time-traveled back to Fun Day Monday for Game 3. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Balira. Two serious games, but now it's time to fuck around. <laughs> Spawning on the right hand side in the orange trunks, our heavy group therapy with Bird playing the Valera, Uga on Sonya Nalo playing the Mage on Kelthos, Shadra on Jahana, and the Wangwin on Manduin. And on the left side map in the Cyan trunks, we have Papegas on Ice, Peas playing the Anubarak, Tikor on the Deckard Kane. Torrens stealing the Leoric, Sylphrenia on the